All right, I would like to say good morning to everyone. Good morning to you that are on Zoom and good morning to you that are in this auditorium. Okay, everybody did. Okay, great. Okay. I would like to uh, thank God for waking me up this morning. He went down this checklist of people who he woke up. And my name was on there. Your name was on there. Your name was on there. We're thankful that our name was on that list. Some people's name wasn't on that list this morning. Some people won't be on that list tomorrow morning. But we are thankful to be able to be here at this present time. So we want to thank God for blessings with another day of life. I was looking at, I, I have a friendly reminder that life is uncertain sometimes, especially in these difficult times. So I was uh, looking, I found out last night that one of my friends that I uh, grew up with in church passed away, uh, 725. Her name was Latanya Hardy. So keep the Hardy family in prayer. You know, so time, is, time goes on. Okay. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we humbly approach the throne of grace. We thank you for who you are, for what you have done for us. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and especially for your son, Jesus Christ, who paid the ultimate price for mankind. We pray that we can be servants of yours and we can continue to do your will. Look down upon us and keep us safe and sound for your lives. For those that are mourning and lost on the loss of a loved one, we pray that you will come to them at a particular time. Be with us as we go into this worship service, as we I deliver a word, pray that it would be something I might say that might encourage us to keep on holding on to God's unchanging faith. This is our prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Well, as I mentioned, we're in a day-to-day -day battle. We're in a fight. We're in a spiritual war. We must, we must fight on. It's a song that we sing, and it's called You Fight On. I'm not going to sing it for you, but it's a great song. You fight on, and you fight on every day. You fight on, and you fight on. You keep your hands in God's hands, and you fight on, oh, and you fight on. There's more to that song, but we're leaving it alone. Yeah, that's a great song, but it sets up for my lesson. This lesson is entitled, You Fight On, Never Give Up. Thank you, Joshua, for uh, reading the scripture for me this morning. We're taking from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. And the Bible says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to those who love his appearance. Must remember these words, right? There is a crown of righteousness that we receive, a victorious crown that we will receive if we fight this battle. If we go through life and keep on fighting with good faith. This lesson is entitled You Fight Up, or You Fight On, Never Give Up. There's a lot of discussion about who's the greatest fighter. Everybody have their favorite boxer. Some might say their favorite boxer is Jack Johnson. Some might say that their favorite boxer is Joe Lewis. Some might say that it's Rocky Marciano. Some say Muhammad Ali is their favorite fighter. Some people might say Joe Frazier. Others might say that Larry Holmes is the greatest fighter. Or Mike Tyson. Pacquiao just had a fight last night. <laughs> he's 42 years old. The outcome wasn't good for him, but he's still one of the, some of the people's favorite boxers. I know you might have a favorite boxer. We have Mike Tyson here. Who's your favorite boxer? Who's your favorite fighter? I know Jesus is my favorite boxer for me in my life. But my favorite boxer is my dad, Al Carter. It's hard to talk about boxing without talking about him because to me he's the greatest boxer. He taught me everything that I know. He, you know, he's, he's my dad. But I have a father also in heaven. 
I have mentioned that my father shaped and mold me. In our life, we need Jesus to shape and mold us in our life. We need to be reminded of him. But all of these boxes I have mentioned, they fought to win a crown. They fought to be a champion of the world. To be a champion, you must train hard, you must practice hard, and you must develop your skills. In boxing, just like any other sport, a champion needs to know his opponent. He needs to know his or her style. He needs to know how uh, his strengths. He needs to know his weaknesses. He needs to know the way he thinks. The champion must have a game plan to be victorious. A champion never gives up. He fights to win the prize. Once a boxer gives up, he is defeated and loses the round or loses the match. One of my favorite stories is about a champion by the name of Archie Moore, the Philadelphia Democrat. Archie Moore. Archie Moore was a world. In 1959, at the age of 40, he was back in his 42. He fought last night, as I mentioned. And in defending this championship title, Archie Moore fought a title fight with a Canadian champion by the name of Ivan Burrell. The boxing match was scheduled for 15 rounds. From the opening bell, the ran, the rail went on, went on an all-out attack and caught Archie Moore cold. He was knocked down to the canvas not only once, twice, but three times in that first round. Amazingly, he made it back to his corner. The fight went on, and in the fifth round, the rail knocked Archie Moore down flat on his back. And amazingly, Archie Moore got up and went back to his corner by the count. A lesser fighter would have folded over and would have gave up, but not Archie Moore. The fight went on, and in the 11th round, Archie Moore hit the rail with a series of solid punches. This sent the rail to the canvas, unable to get up to finish the fight. Archie Moore won by a TKO, technical knockout. This fight went down in history as one of the most spectacular comebacks in the history of boxing. What's my point? This is a story about a physical conflict. It's about a battle. It's about a way that, it's about a way. <laughs> it's about determination, I said. I my glass, but I can't say that little right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Read it. Read it. That one got smart. Anyway, okay. It's about a physical and mental endurance. I'm enduring. <laughs> it's about someone that kept focusing on the prize. And it's about a fighter who fought and never gave up. I could imagine Archie Morris saying, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my match. And I have kept my championship. After retirement from boxing, Archie Moore often gave motivational speeches. He used to carry a 16 millimeter clip of that fight that I had mentioned. He showed it everywhere he went. One of Archie Moore's favorite quotes was, no matter how out of it you are, you always get up and come back to be a winner. That saying is true with God. No matter how out of it you are, you can always get up and come back and be a winner. That previous slide that I had took up was taken from 2009 on a missionary trip that I made in Africa. Went to, we went to a, the largest slum in Africa, Kaburi. This person that was in that picture was sitting outside the slum in that garbage, and it was a fire rage. I always think about that person. I always think about, you know, that person made it. That person had the endurance to get up and do something. A lot more stories I could tell you about that trip. But that person right there sticks in my mind a lot because he, that person was in some bad situation. I hope he just fought and never gave up. And I hope that he found the Lord that would help him fight the fight and get back on his feet. We can go out in our neighborhoods and we can see a lot of this 
a lot of that in our neighborhoods now. Down the roads, on the freeways, we see a lot of that now. Similarities. We must help those. We must help ourselves. And we must always remember to keep on fighting and never give up. The most important thing is we on luck, we rely on the Lord to help us. Jesus will help us. Jesus is saying, you fight on, never give up. Christian life is often represented as a conflict or a battle. The battle with sin, the battle with the world, the battle with flesh, and the battle with Satan. A Christian must fight the good fight of faith. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. A Christian is often represented as, Christian life is often represented as a race to be run. This race is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Age is not a factor as long as you finish the race. Very important. October 16, 2011, a man by the name of Fuzia Singh earned a spot in the Guinness Book of Records for his accomplishment. It took Mr. Singh more than eight hours to cross the finish line of a marathon. That's 26.2 miles. What's amazing about the story is that Mr. Singh was 100 years old at the time of this race. He didn't win the race, but he finished. And I looked this gentleman up. He's still alive. His birthday was April the 1st. He's 110 years old. Amazing. Amen? He was amazing. So if a Christian lives to be 100 years old or older, he must stay in the Christian race. He must keep on fighting Satan, and he must never give up. As a Christian look back on his life, he must say, I have kept the faith, I have steadfastly maintained the faith of the gospel, and I have lived a life of fidelity to my master. I have spent my life faithfully enduring to serve my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You fight on. Never give up. In our lives, we face many challenges. We face many trials. We face many difficult problems. Some, sometimes we feel like giving up. Sometimes we feel like quitting. We all have heard the old saying, quitters never win, winners never quit. So with many other different problems in our lives, we keep, keep on fighting. But unfortunately, some people quit and give up fighting. Whatever problems you might be facing right now, you fight on, never give up. There's a story really that all of a sudden a big duck swoops down and tries to swallow the frog. The frog managed to get his arms out of the duck's mouth, and he grabs the duck by his throat keeping him from swallowing. The duck had to open up his mouth to get some air, and that's allowed the, that allowed the frog to escape. Never give up. You fight on, never give up. The main point is the frog, the frog fought on and made it, never gave up. You do never give up. When problems try to swallow you, you grab it by the throat, and you fight on and never give up. Then, it does make me feel real sad when I hear about a Christian walking away from the Lord or giving up on God. I heard about a Christian living the Christian life for 5, 10, 20, 40 plus years that I've walked away from God. This happens to new babes in Christ. Some people might say, was they ever rooted and grounded? Can we say the same thing about somebody that's, that's older and has fell in the way, fallen away? Some of these were very good. Some were great examples. Some was teachers. Some was preachers. Some said that they, they loved the Lord. What happened? Why did they leave the law? 
Christians come up with all kinds of reasons why they leave God. Whatever the reason is, they still left God. Leaving God is nothing new. God's chosen people has been leaving him since the beginning. Adam and Eve left God the moment they sinned against him. The Israelites had a problem with leaving God. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, the Apostle Paul writes, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. It was one of Paul's companions. There are many things in this world that are, are attractive. There are many things in this world that gets our attention. There are many things that could draw us away from God. There are, there's an old saying, all that glitters is not gold. That means everything that looks precious is not precious. God's people are precious in his eyes. God promised he would never leave his people. He would never leave us. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 8 says, and God, I mean, and the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. First Samuel chapter 12, verse 22. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because he has, it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. It's an honor and a privilege to be called a child of God. Amen? Amen? Everybody's with me. Just check. We get our strength and protection from him. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand, right hand. Psalm chapter 37, and verse 28. For the Lord loves justice, and he does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. After Jesus had died and he was buried and rose again from the third day, he came to the disciples and said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you even to the very end of the age. Amen. That's the very end of our life, but he will be with us eternally if we are found worthy to wear the crown after we live our life. So it's about spending the rest of our eternity. We were made for eternity. Either you're going to be with God or you're going to be with the other side. That's that, that we was made for eternity. When Adam and Eve, it was made for eternity. When they sinned, they were separated. So you have a separation of, from God. You have a separation from the two is, uh, eternity destination. One is destruction, and one is in the love of God for eternity. Right, that, that? Amen? When a Christian leaves God, he does not have any protection against Satan. He's alone. He's weak. And it would be fighting a spiritual war that he cannot win. First Peter chapter 5 and 8. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking to whom he may devour. When a lion hunts his prey, he looks for the weakest of the herd. The Christian is out there in the world by himself. He's an easy victim to save. They beat you up, just like the lion. We need Christ. We need Christ Jesus to help us fight Satan. We need Jesus to protect us. We need His strength. We need Him to guide us through this life. And most of all, we need His love. It's up to us to fight on and never give up. You fight on, never give up. Christian must be on the guard because Satan is powerful. The Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, says, Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and 
and the power of his might, of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. We can't fight in the heavenly places without Jesus. We cannot fight in the heavenly places without Jesus. He fights our battle, battles in that realm. He fights with us. He helps us in this realm, but he fights our battles in the unseen world we don't even know. He woke us up today. Somebody might have been, something might have been fighting to take us away, and Jesus would say, no, it's going to wake up today. Amen? Yeah. Keep it real. We can see that there are forces that we fight against that we cannot see. We can see the results and we can see the destruction that it leaves behind. There are forces that we can't beat. It's like a boxer, shadow boxer. He'll never beat his shadow. It's like a runner trying to catch his shadow. If he runs to the left or to the right, the shadow will always outrun him. The only way a boxer or a runner can beat his shadow is to wait till the sun goes down. The only way a Christian can beat evil, the evil forces is that what he cannot see is to rely on the sun. The sun had to come down to fight for us. Amen. Sometimes we get in our own way because of the lust of the eye, because of the lust of the flesh, because of the pride of life. We wrestle and fight with ourselves mentally and spiritually. The Apostle Paul, he points, it out, points this out in Romans chapter 7, verse 14 through 25. But my emphasis is going to be on uh, verse 23. I call this the I do's. <laughs> he wanted to do good, but he doesn't. He says that, but I see another law in my members warring against me the law of my mind, and bring me into captivity to the law of sin, which is my members. So he's fighting this, this mental, physical, this mental war in his mind. You know, you always see these little devils on your shoulder, a devil on your shoulder and an angel, and you kind of have a, this conversation. You know, that's, that's the kind of conversation that goes on and that Paul is mentioned about this battling. Should I do right? Should I do this? Should I do that? And they say that it's flesh or the pride of life Sometimes override the winds out. That's the battle that we need uh, to avoid. We need to rely on Jesus. It is very important to not to listen to the negative things Christians and non Christians might say about God. They could drag you down with them. There's a story about two frogs that accidentally jumped into a large container of milk. One of the frogs looked up all around and said, We're going to die. The other frog looked around and said to himself, I'm going to find a way out of here. So he swam around in his bucket of milk, round and round and round for hours, round and round for hours. So that milk turned to butter, and that frog was able to leap out of that, that bucket. Amen. The point is that the frog survived. He didn't listen to the negative input of the other frog. Christians, uh, there are Christians who gave up on God because of what other Christians might have said or done to them. This might have been someone that might have sat right next to you in, next to you in worship service. They could have said or done something to you that could have caused you to stumble. That person might have fallen away. Aren't you glad that you didn't listen to that person? Amen. Amen. It's, it's real. Amen. It's real. Some couples might have fallen up on God because one of them might have lost their faith and dragged the other one down with them. I hear about that a lot, unfortunately. Whatever you're going through, whatever you need to give it to Jesus, no matter who or what you are fighting, don't never give up. Some Christians are fighting financial problems. Some Christians are fighting family problems. Some Christians are fighting work-related problems. 
some some Christians are fighting health problems. We're all are fighting the problem with the, the virus. Big problem in the world. We're fighting a lot more. You know, the list goes on and on. No matter what you're fighting, whatever the problem is, you fight on. Never give up. Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A yoke is a device for joining together a pair of work animals, especially oxen. It's a harness. Jesus is saying, put him on and he will work for you. He will help carry your load. He said, I will carry your burdens. Jesus is saying, you fight on, never give up. I will help you. Sometimes we don't understand what we are going through. That's when we need to go. We need to hold on to God's unchanging hand. We need to trust God to direct your path. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Amen. In Romans chapter 8 and 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose, God will work them out for us. Remember what the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Paul was saying this as he was had all these tribulations and trials that he went through in his life. He was in the deep, he was whipped, he was left for dead. And this goes on with Paul. I pray that none of us have to go through all the stuff like Paul went through. I wouldn't want to go through it. But Paul was dedicated to the Lord. He fought on and he never gave up. And he said he could do all things in Christ was good enough. We too can make it. Get your strength from Jesus. Get your strength from studying your Bible. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 says, Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Get your strength from studying the Bible. Get your strength from fellowshipping with Christians. Get your strength from talking about God on a regular basis. Get your strength from studying on your own. Get your strength from him. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 8, draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Draw near to God by studying the word, opening up that book, put it in your mind, put it in your heart, have it work out through you. Brothers and sisters, get your strength from reading about the struggles and temptations of the Apostle Paul and other Bible characters lived through. The Apostle Paul writes in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by such a great witness, witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The, Paul, the Apostle Paul writes about a great cloud of witnesses. He's referring back to chapter 11. He will remind us of the great fighters for God. The thought here is not that they are watching us from heaven, but they are examples to us. And they and we can learn from them, learn from the scriptures, we'll learn from what they did. We can learn what they did good for God, we can learn what they did bad for God, we can learn what type of character they were in life. He points out all of them. You know what? A lot of them wasn't perfect. A lot of them weren't perfect, they, but they were like us, work in progress. But they kept fighting and never gave up. We see their glories, we see their triumphs, we see the factors that brought them victory, and we see the obstacles that they overcame in order to win their fight. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Adam and Eve are saying to the married couples, we know that you have some struggles and problems in relationships. You fight on, never give up. Noah is saying, I have a substance abuse problem. You fight on, never give up. Adam, or Abraham is saying, sometimes I didn't always tell the truth. You fight on, never give up. Meaning is saying, I followed God and he took me up to heaven. He could do the same for you. You fight on, never give up. Moses told God, I don't have any talents. God said, I will give you talents. Moses is telling the Sandy Christians, use your God-given talents. You fight on, never give up. The sick woman that touched the hem of Jesus' garment is saying, I have some health issues or I have some health problems. Keep the faith. You fight on, never give up. Amen. The Apostle Paul is saying, I've been in the deep. I've been beaten. I've been left for dead. I've been in many dangerous situations for the cause of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You fight on, never give up. Jesus is saying, for God so loved the world that he gave me, his only begotten son, that whoever believes in me should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send me, his son, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. Jesus Christ the world might be saved. You fight on, never give up. This, this is a part of the story. So I have a friend passed away September 26, 2011. Her name was Maria Hardy. I mentioned her sister had just passed on, uh, on July the 25th, the same day. So that's, that's pretty sad. We called her Frog. <laughs> Some of the illustrations, ooh. Some of the illustrations in my lesson of frog characters. <clears throat> this lesson was in remembrance of my friend Frog. I got to put her sister in the mail. We went to elementary school, junior high school, and graduated from Blair High School. <clears throat> we also had a congregation growing up as children, the Griffin Street Church of Christ in Blair. Frog was a faithful Christian to the end. After her going home celebration, I went home and reflect back on the past, our past together. I looked into my yearbook and I ran across something that Frog had written to me in 1969. It says, <coughs> Hello. It says to Derek, a very nice, sweet young man who I love, I hope we can be friends forever from a friend always fall hard. 69. This is a cover of the yearbook that was inside that she wrote on there. And you can see her right right there with signed frog. And the interesting thing about it, Kathy pointed this out that that cross in the middle was a cross. And on the other page, you know, uh, on the other page of that, Right next to that page on the other side, it's another cross in that yearbook. It's kind of interesting. Saul carried her cross. Jesus carried his cross. Jesus is saying to Saul, you fought a good fight. Fought a good fight. You finished the race. You kept the faith. Now you can receive your crown of righteousness. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You may enter it into my heavenly kingdom. Amen.
Jesus carried his cross. We carry our cross. We are a witness of what our life brings to God. Now, fog is with the, with the great cloud of witnesses. She is with the great fighters for God, encouraging us to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Fog used to say to me when we was growing up, I know what you used to do. And I used to say, I know what you used to do too. Don't do those things anymore. We used to tease each other with that. Now she's probably saying to, to you and me, you fight on, never give up. That's my lesson for today. You fight on, never give up. Very important that we realize and understand who Jesus is and what he can do for us in this life and to the afterlife. If you're not a Christian, you need to know that you can become a Christian by believing. You heard the word that Jesus came down to this earth that he sacrificed his life on behalf of mankind, that he was buried, that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. You must repent of your sins. Anything that you have done in the past, you can be forgiven of those things. You can have them all washed away in water baptism. You must confess that Jesus is going to be your Lord and Master in your life, that you're going to follow him in your life. Confess it to mankind. Confess who he is. In baptism, you must have all your sins washed away. Can't enter in your heart. Can't enter into a dirty sanctuary. It's got to be pure. Got to be clean. The priest went into the, the most holiest place after they had cleansed themselves, after they washed and had their, all their garments clean. They will not go in there. God would not allow it. You have to be washed and clean. Can enter in your heart. Mark 15, uh, 16, 15 through 6, he said, he did, Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized should be saved. But he who does not believe shall be condemned. Those passages right there, right here, tells us you need to be washed and cleansed of your sin in order to have Jesus represent you in your life. It's important that we recognize who and what Jesus has done for us. For Christians that have been fighting for a long time, I say you fight on and never give up. For a person that is looking for God, you can join in the fight by being washed and baptized for the forgiveness of your sin. And you could be amongst Jesus' people. Whatever your uh, situation is, you can make it known to us, and we will cater to your need. There's a song that has been selected. We encourage you to listen to the song and to respond appropriately. Thank you for your attention. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word.